Here is how I track the resistance I use in my workouts when training with resistance bands. A quick note, resistance bands don't really use weight. Instead, they use resistance, really variable resistance by stretching the bands in order to provide tension to your muscles to get stronger. Because of this, you won't be stacking on weight. Instead, you'll be adding additional resistance for each exercise. Now I will be demonstrating with the following items for my resistance bands. First off, we have loop style resistance bands. These in the video are the Undersun loop bands. I will also be using the Instar resistance bands bar, uh, some triangle quick links, and the step platform to show off how I'm going to add and remove resistance from each exercise. So to begin, each of the resistance bands needs to be the same size, meaning that the loop itself actually needs to be the same size around. You can't have different size resistance bands as this is gonna make it very hard to track in your training. And in basically every single set I've ever purchased, it comes with a set of five bands. So that's what I'm gonna be working with here. If you have more, you can change up the number of values, but here is how I would break down those five. And I'm going to use the size of the Undersun loop bands in order to demonstrate. So I go in increments of 10, starting with the X small band all the way to X heavy. And the X small band is 10 pounds. Then we have the small band at 20 pounds, the medium band at 30 pounds, heavy band at 40 pounds, and the X heavy band at 50 pounds. Now again, this is how I break them down. You can do what you want, but this is how I go ahead and make it easy for me to know what I used each time. Now, if you do use more than the 50 pounds, I never actually stack any of the lesser bands, say maybe the medium and the heavy together, which would come out to 70 pounds. I've never stacked it that way. Instead, I would take the heaviest band, so this would be the X heavy at 50 pounds, and add on the small band at 20 pounds to make the 70. So you always go to 50, and then once you use the 50, you add on the smaller bands from there. Now for tracking, I do use an Excel sheet for my personal workouts. And for this, each time I use a band, I will write down the value of that band. So example, if I use the medium band, which is the middle band of the bunch, and that is 30 pounds for my tracking, I will use that and put it on my tracking worksheet. Now, if we are gonna use more than 50 pounds, say maybe 80 pounds instead, what I'm gonna do is go all the way to the highest band. So we're gonna do X heavy, make sure we use that band. And then we're gonna stack on the medium band in this case, which is the 30 to make up the 80 pounds. I'm not gonna do things like put the, uh, the small and X small together to make the 30 pounds. That's just too many bands. I don't wanna work with that. Instead, I'm gonna try and make it as easy as possible. Again, use 50 and the medium for 30 to make the 80 and not combine a bunch of different bands instead. However, if you get to a point where you get to the X heavy and heavy and you still need more, this is where we're gonna add a third band. And again, we're just gonna start from the lowest one and keep adding on. Maybe eventually you max out all the bands, but that'd be pretty amazing if you did is that'd be a lot of resistance to work against, especially if you did something that was like an overhead press, that'd be very impressive. So how do I break down progression when using my resistance bands? Now I recommend when you start off doing your progression that you start with a band that you can only get about eight reps with. From there, over time, you're gonna work up till you get to your max reps. For me, that's around 15, before adding on more resistance in order to make the workout harder. Now, over time, we're going to make it so we can put on the heaviest band and do the workout from there and max the number of reps. So again, once you reach that point and you need to add on more resistance, that's where you're gonna use the 50. Plus in this case, we're gonna go all the way down to the smallest band or the X small to add an additional 10 for 60 pounds of resistance. But no, only add on additional resistance once you reach that max number of reps you want to do before moving on. You will need like a max number or else your workouts will just take forever. Say I did like the medium band and I just put that one on. Once I reached the max reps, if I just kept at doing more and more reps, I could probably just go on forever and my workouts would take super long. So that's why you want to keep the workouts efficient. So that's why for me, I max out at 15 reps and then add on more resistance so that I will fail at an earlier period. So to round it out, here are some recommendations I have when using resistance bands after testing them for quite some time. First off, find a way to make holding the resistance bands as comfortable as possible. And for me, this is the bar setup that I use. Yes, I used to just stand on the bands and hold them directly, but I really hate it, especially if you have the resistance bands go over your palms. That feeling is just not comfortable. So I took a bar, got a platform, and made it so it was much easier on my hands to be comfortable in all of the exercises. My next tip is to find a way to standardize all of the exercises as well, as this makes for much easier tracking. 
If you're doing things like separating your feet or bringing them closer together or holding the band at different points along it to make it more or less resistance or tighter or looser, it's very hard to actually track what you did to progress next time. So that's why, again, I like having the bar that sets the standard width I'm using to attach the bands to and the step platform as it also adds the same amount of tension throughout the band. So that way each one of these is going to be the same each time. All I need to do is add on resistance to track it while moving forward. Now, one thing to note with the resistance bands is that the strength curve is not really that great for all the exercises, meaning that as you go through the range of motion, the tension should normally be at the peak for many of the exercises about halfway. That's not true for all the exercises, but for many of them. For example, the biceps curl, when you're going through it, at the beginning is a weak spot in the lift. As you go through the middle of the range of motion, it's actually where you're strongest. And as you reach back to the top or resting point for many people using something like dumbbells, you are actually weaker again. So you kind of want to keep um, the resistance more towards the middle of the lift. However, because of the bands, you're getting all of the tension really in a contracted, weaker position. So for this, what I recommend doing is do as many reps as you can in that full range of motion. But as you start to fail out, simply just do less and less of the range of motion as far as you can until you can't keep normal form with your body and have to let go and end the set. By doing it this way, you should be able to fatigue the muscles at each part of the range of motion in the lift. So just make sure that when you're actually failing, that you're still trying to go as far as you can through each part of the range of motion, especially for something like bicep curls before you end the lift. Another recommendation I have is that you want to start with tension in the bands. You do not ever want to start with them fully slacked. This is where the step platform is actually very, very helpful as it does allow another four inches of stretch in the band for exercises that you do standing. So if you're doing something like squats, you're already gonna have quite a bit of tension in the band as you go into your first position. Same with when you do something like Romanian deadlifts, bicep curls, overhead tricep extensions, all of those have a great amount of tension when you use them. Something like a pull down though, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you contract your back just a little bit to get some tension in the bands before actually going through the exercise itself. And my last tip is to never fully slacken the band when doing your exercise. Make sure again you have tension the entire time you're doing each one of the exercises because once you remove all the tension, you're just sitting there basically with nothing to work with on your muscles. So keep some time under load throughout each of the lift. Even if resistance bands isn't providing much, make sure there's some resistance placed on the muscles the entire time until you make it through all of your reps. So we have now covered how to track, progress, and some recommendations on using the bands themselves. Make sure you go out and use these tips to get bigger and stronger if you're using resistance bands in your home workout. If you need a full workout plan, make sure to check out the video on screen where I do a complete resistance bands workout from the comfort of home. But with that, remember to be fit and game on.